Hi everybody, it's Jason again with the USS Cod down here in Erie, Pennsylvania at the John John Shipyard. Um, this is going to be update number two. So we'll do a quick walk around and uh, give you an idea of where we're at now with uh, the repairs. So here's a view of the Ford Torpedo area. Um, it's heavily corroded on the between uh, torpedo, the, the top torpedo and the second torpedo really bad because this is your water line area. So wherever it gets wet and dry, wet and dry, wet and dry, that tends to be your worst corrosion where the area below is nowhere near as bad. Um, we're going to try to walk through this tour as quickly as I can. Uh, <laughs> Ohio and Pennsylvania have just been doused with rain for the last few weeks. Um, very abnormal July. So we're going to try to do this without getting too wet. But as you can see, there was a lot of damage to the rust. They've completely removed all the bad stuff and they're adding all this new metal in here, these new gussets and this new wall here um, to try to rebuild this whole area and strengthen this whole, because as you can see with, with with nothing in between there, it's just it's just open, you know, this just hangs. So this is almost kind of structural for the superstructure area up top here. Here's all the new gussets and plates and pieces of metal that they're replacing the Ford Torpedo area with. So that'll all be going in there very shortly. They're working on it today when I was here earlier. So they've opened up the chain locker, uh, one section here, and they're not going to go any farther. They're just doing kind of an opening inspection. There's still quite a bit of mud packed into areas in here, but we're just going to leave that because that mud actually is protecting some of the corrosion inside there, um, and it would just end up getting back in there again. Um, so there's no need to go any farther. They're going to probably put the plate back on there and weld it back up. You can also see we got a nice fresh new coat of paint on our hull. This is actually a primer. This is donated by Sherwin Williams. Um, we want to thank Sherwin Williams for that. And she's looking good. So now that she's been blasted and painted, we can see a little bit better as we come under here. And you see some of the blanking plates here. So these first four here are your, um, there's actually Kingston valves underneath there. And this is the fuel oil tank right inside of these walls here. And so the fuel oil tank has fuel oil in it when it is emptied out. And this is what I was told by our chief of the boat. Um, these valves here can be opened up and the vent on top can be popped and they could flush this tank and then you can begin to use that tank as a ballast tank. This other round vent here, this is a sonar array that comes out down below here. It was blanked over. If you're ever on the tour inside the boat, um, you can see that that is in the four torpedo room right next to the head. And the, the plugs just above it are probably your intake and your discharge for the torpedo room head area. Okay, a little bit farther down, we're just forward to the conning tower. You can see another um, intake there. That would be the intake uh, we believe is going to be for the air compressors. Um, and that's just underneath the control room. And then that would be your discharge for it, just above it. We're gonna be leaving that one open but right next to it is a discharge and below that is an intake and that would be for your air conditioning. Um, this is the one that I showed you before that I've been keeping an eye on for the years. Um, we're gonna be blanking that over as well. We don't run the air conditioners. They're not operable, so uh, we're gonna blank that over. No need to leave open areas in the hall that don't need to be left open. Um, just a little bit farther down, you can see some of the larger blanking plates. I'll try to get under here. Some of these larger blanking plates. That's gonna be your standard ballast, ballast vent in the bottom and there's another one back behind there um, those ballast vents are just open to the sea and way up above in the superstructure you have a vent cap that kind of seals off this this whole this whole tank kind of like putting your thumb on top of a straw and then dropping it into a water you'd still maintain air inside that straw but as soon as you pop that vent the water will rush in through the bottom of the straw and fill it up that's what happens with these tanks and that's what makes the submarine heavier or less buoyant and then she'll submerge um, the air compressors fill uh, air banks up to 4,000 PSI. I believe it was 4,000 PSI. And they use that air, compressed air, to blow. And once they shut the valves on top of the super, or above the, the pressure hull, they close those valves, and then they push, pump the compressed air into this tank, which will blow the water out the bottom of the, the ballast vent, and then therefore making her positively buoyant again as she uh, comes up from the depths. Those will remain blanked. Other people had asked me why we wouldn't remove those and make this sub-operational one. We don't have screws for her. We would not be putting screws on her even if we did. Um, we are not allowed to operate this under its own power, from what I've been told. 
Okay, here's a better look at the sea chest. The sea chest, uh, again, is what I first started coming down and volunteering on the cod for to clean. So they removed the plate, and you can see pretty far down in there. Um, the sea chest is what brings seawater in to the heat exchangers, and those heat exchangers run cool coolant basically through the engine to keep it cool. There's the plate for it over there. Uh, I've been scraping that plate for 15 years, and it's nice and painted now. And hopefully, she'll stay uh, zebra muscle free for a little while at least. Um, some of the people comment on their video, this is the screen door on the bottom of the submarine for the sailors to wash their laundry. Pretty funny. With the heavy amounts of rain that we've been getting down here, um, the belt replacement areas are being covered with tarps so the guys can work under there and stay dry with their welding equipment. So um, there's an area on the port side that I'll show you where it's not covered kind of give an explanation of what we've done um, we also have decided we're not going to be cutting out and removing most of the sections of the side plates here for a few reasons um, one of course is cost there's a lot of cost involved in doing this operation um, and, and, and two is uh, there's risk of fire especially in these, these areas where there's not a second hull so um, there's a special two-part epoxy resin that they're going to sandblast and fill in a lot of these areas um, I'll show you a piece of the metal that has some of these holes in it is still pretty thick so um, if it's not paper thin walls we're just going to try to repair the metal with an epoxy instead of doing the uh, removal and replacement um, back in the stern area has not been a whole lot done you can see that the, um, the sacrificial anodes that were on here since the 50s I believe have been removed or at least the 60s they've all been removed and will be replaced with, with uh, aluminum or magnesium anodes and we'll be putting some more on there as well the aft torpedo uh, superstructure behind torpedoes one, two, three, and four in the aft section here has all been gutted and removed. Um, again, with the weather, it's been slowing things down, but there's all the metal that's going to be going into that section, all new fabrication for it. So it should be all shiny and new and give us another five or six decades in Cleveland. Here's a section of the belt that was replaced. Uh, you can see they cut what they call they actually call these windows. They cut these windows in there, and after they weld this main plate on they climb inside through those windows and weld the back side to the ribs on the inside then they weld the plate back on over the top of it. You can see the port side star um, I'm sorry port side sea chest it's been blanked over we're gonna leave that blanking on we have no need to bring water in there but you can see it a lot better now that we've sandblasted and cleaned it. As far as sandblasting and cleaning goes um, on Tuesday, which today is Friday, I plan on fleeting the boat. And uh, what fleeting is, is basically they will bring water into the, the dry dock, float her up off of her blocks. They're gonna move her over about two feet. They're gonna set her back down, drain the dry dock, and they're going to take care of the areas that couldn't be sandblasted or painted while she was sitting on the blocks. Um, this would typically be done in three different moves. In, in the Navy, they would fleet a boat every two years. So year one, you would do position one on the blocks year two or i'm sorry two years later you would do position two and then two years later you would do position three so that means every two years the blocks would be sitting in a different position and you would get coating on all those areas every six years or every two years actually um, the reason we're going to do it all at once is because we don't have the money to be dry docking the submarine every two years so we're going to do this all at once um, the, the, the fleeting will not have to fill up the entire dry dock. The dry dock here is about 30 feet deep. And we only need about 15 feet of water to put her back afloat. So they'll fill the dry dock up with about 15 feet of water. They'll move her over a couple feet. They'll set her back down, drain the dry dock back out, um, which takes about 12 hours from beginning to end. Here's a section of the hull that was cut out. Um, and you can see that the thickness here, we're looking at about a half an inch. And for the most part, it looks pretty solid. There was some areas where we had some pitting but none of the pits really went all the way through, an exception of a few areas, and then we were removing and replacing and welding those areas up. But that kind of gives you an idea um, of why we decided, for cost reasons, is to go with this uh, the epoxy filler, which works on large freighters, and we've heard from the shipyard that it lasts for a long, long time. As you can see under the tarp, one of our worst areas has been replaced. It's been cut out and replaced with all new metal. So looking pretty. In order to fleet the boat, 
this big orange wall back here that's basically a floating barge and what they do is they open these four valves right there and lets all the water into the dry dock 30 feet high we're 1100 feet long um, and it, once the water comes in here to the point where they could float the boat they will close those valves they'll float the boat and then there's these large pumps in this pump house way up here where they're gonna pump the water back out when the cod goes to leave or a ship comes in or out of this they basically fill the water up 30 feet deep here in this dry dock and then that boat that barge will just be swung out and docked on the wall um, over in that area there but right now we're sitting 30 feet below the water line so that's kind of how the way the dry dock works back towards the bow you can kind of see still the damage um, to the her bow and that was from when we left Cleveland we were a part of the Navy Coast Guard paint trading program um, we'll be taking care of that soon Okay, so that's a quick tour of uh, the cot on our, my second trip up here um, and seeing her repairs as they come along. Um, we are planning on, if you are from Erie, Pennsylvania, we're looking at a tentative date of about August 2nd, deploying out of dry dock. And what we're working on is getting some corporate sponsors and try to find a dock somewhere where we can get public access and allow the people at Erie to come and check her out for at least a couple days. Uh, so. We're, we're trying to get that, that secured. It's something that, that our, our crew is working on, and we'll, we'll keep you updated. Um, keep an eye on the news channels. They, they'll probably be uh, supporting that as well. Um, other than that, just keep supporting these submarines and ships that are in the museum fleets. Uh, these are all pretty much self-funded. We've been saving money, from what I was told, since the 70s to do this, and we're in excess of a million dollars in repair bills so far. And it's still going on so um, it's not cheap for us to do this and we really need people's support to help if you want to make a donation or if you want to uh, support us in any way go to usscod.org and you can see the um, the contact information for Paul for for ace that's our president of the organization and uh, he could direct you in, in that way so thank you for watching and uh, be good to one another thank you